The Haze Hour is sponsored by Janty, pioneers in e-cigs. Donald, where's your three? No, it's not. Hello, good evening, welcome. It is Thursday. It is the 22nd of November in the year of our Lord 2012. And tonight, Keith has had a makeover. Good evening, Keith. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, you make three of them. What can I say? <laughs> all, all the way, all the way from the Shire, that is of York, it's, it's Mark Green, Mark o Van Basten as ever was. It is I. From Tuesday night. Uh, hi. <laughs> yes. Shock, and a full hour tonight, mind. I know. Oh, there'll be a sweat one. Oh, we're, we're, co we're covering lots of stuff. Not as much as you do, but we're going to be, we're covering tonight. It's going to be brilliant. It's going to be great. We've got the Inneken Eye Taste MVP, the most valuable player, or MPV, PAVM. Anyway, Sav knows what it's called, and she'll be talking to you about that. Mm. And it's a, it's a good night for Sav tonight. What's she doing? Oh. She's got a new hoover. No, 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 oh. no, don't be silly. Sav we're talking about. Can't hoovers. Good <laughs> Lord above. No, no. Tonight, anybody that's got a hand fetish is going to be over the moon. It's the third part of her journey into rebuildables. Ah. Now, I've never seen a mother giving lessons to our daughter before, <laughs> but it's going to be a thrill. It's uh -huh. going to be absolutely thrilling. And then, the prime topic. There's a clue, and that there is the clue. One of those is make-believe. It's not real. And the other one is... It's a booty one. Mm. And tonight... David's going to tell it like it is. And that is on this episode of The Here's Hour. Hey, hey, loud music. Get your heat banging. And indeed it is, the here's hour as ever was. Well, welcome to God's chosen country, Marco. Thank you very much, Mr. D. It, you're quite welcome, you're quite... How are you finding it up here? Are you understanding everybody all right? Well, you know, I've got cousins live down the road and I've been coming up to Washington for three years now, so, you know. So you're pretty much all right with it? Hi, yeah. Oh, that's always good. Yeah. That's always good. I had, I had worried that perhaps, you know, the Yorkshireman in you wouldn't understand the kind of the Geordie twang and the, the wayside twang. And no, not at all. Good Lord above. Because you're, you're a posh Yorkshireman, you are. That's because I lived in London for so many years. Oh, I said, <laughs> well, isn't that rather pleasant? Isn't it? Yeah. 24 years living in London, yeah. It takes the Yorkshire out of you. But I'm back in South Yorkshire now. The North, so, so is it coming back like the aye, way it was? Aye, it's really good. Really oh, that's good. all right then. Because I, I can't stand these, these well... The bloke I'm thinking of, I shouldn't really name him, Robson Green. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what a, I mean, he's lost his accent something chronic. He yes. tries to be dead posh, but it keeps on slipping out when he swears. He's like the Proclaimers. You know, the Proclaimers had to have lessons to sing in Scottish because they sang like Americans. Yes. And Robson Green probably has to have lessons to speak Geordie now. No, no, no. You know, when he gets drunk, he's fine. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah, he is. Shall we blast on and do a proper mm. show, do you think? Yeah. What's that he using, anyway? I'm on a twist. Uh huh. No, I'm not. No, I'm you're on a not spinner. on a twist. You're on a spinner. <laughs> yeah, I'm on a spinner. I got it. Uh, got it yesterday, and I've been um, playing around with it today in the car. There's a thing. Oh, aye. Um, oh yes. Coming up on vapor season in a couple of weeks. Um, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's right nice. Uh, I've got it with a um, little mini VV with some a caramel latte, 24 milligram. Caramel latte. Caramel latte. Yeah, proper man's drink. I read the chat, you know. What's, what's wrong with caramel espresso, like? 
Caramel espresso is good. I've got espresso mocha in there as well. I like my coffee juices. Good um, lord above. And uh, yeah, on a 1.8 coil. Nice. Working all right, is it? Aye. Very good. That's my second fill today. <laughs> and, and Kel Voltage? Or Kel Voltage at the moment is about 3.94 something like i have to say in terms of how it sits in your hand i've got the the diddy one here because mm. that's the 1300 isn't it yes that's the 11. Yes. i think it sits in your hand fatter better yes it's because i've got big hands hunts i've got ham hands man ham hands why aye? good lord above <laughs> we didn't talk like that hill i could teach you how to talk geordie <sighs> first fir first the name of a lens hoya hoya then the name of an implement Hammer, hammer, and then a, a sixty-second interval. Hour. <laughs> Seriously. Hour. And then where we are now, here, here, and a term of endearment, hini. So put the three together. Hoya, hammer, hour, here, hini. Hoya, hammer, hammer, here, hini. Ah no! Should not say just roller coaster. Roller coaster, oh man, it's been, it's been an emotional <laughs> roller coaster. <laughs> hey, I tell, look, I'll tell you what, let's, yeah, shall yeah. we, shall we, um, mm. should we? Mm. Not going to cross to Sav. <laughs> yeah, I will, man. Now, Sav, Sav has been learning on, on this journey with the BIM how to use rebuildable atomizers, how to rebuild. She did this, the simple bit with the pre coiled, provided coil she did. last week after having used it without recoiling it in the first week. Mm -hmm. This week, she's going to be building her own coil, but she's got help. From the coil queen. From the coil queen. Mm. The ice queen, the coil queen. So she's going to do that. Sav, um, which bit of it do you start with? We'll start with this bit. The silica. How, it's a big long bit. How much do I need? Tip number one. Silica unravels very, very easily. Keep it in the bag. Wrapped. Keep it wrapped in the bag. Keep it wrapped in the bag. Seal your bag with a bit sticking out. Ooh, am I clever? Why? Right, I'm clever, you know. Top tip. Keep it in the bag. Keep it in the bag and then you've already got. And what you do, I believe, is you wrap it around your finger. Well, show it to the camera. Right. Wrap it around your finger like that. Take your finger out. You don't need to cut it, you don't need to do anything at the moment because it's all there. Right, so the next thing I need is. However, because you're going to get in a mess, I'm going to cut it. Right. right, so I have a paper clip with this held against it. Correct. Like so. Then take your wire. And what, this is where a third hand comes down. No, it isn't. <laughs> right, so take Hold said wire. a lump of wire with an end under your thumb there. Under my thumb is a lump of wire with an end. That's an end. And start wrapping. Close together. Right, this is the bit where she says close together. And I'm like. Just wrap it. You can move them apart later. How many times? Do it five times if you didn't like six. Five times. Like so. Okay. Once. But this is huge. Leave yourself plenty of wire to work with. Yes. I don't approve. Paper clip keeps it nice and rigid because you can't secure things just using your thumb. Right, we'll hold that round the screw now. We have to tighten this first screw, don't we? Yes. It's not looking very pretty. So far. Right, I'll try and put the other one in. Right, well the next stage is you well know 
Make sure those wires are facing up, not touching anything. Okay, now attach it to a device to test. I have said Darwin. What you've managed to do there is you've tested everything without committing yourself to absolutely anything. Because everything is still in place. Is still intact. So I need to take off some of the wraps. Mm -hmm. And tighten it up again. Because everything up to there counts in your homage. These bits do not. Right. Thankfully. And it seems to work. Well, who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk it? Now I have to trim the bits. Cut the things and cut the things you no longer require. Now it's had a bit of a jiggle about, so we'll see if it still works. Aye. Now it's sitting at a solid two six. Excellent. I did it. You sound awfully surprised. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm completely and utterly shocked. That's it, I've done it, it's done. And not a drop of blood was spilled. No blood. No tears. No. A few threats of violence, but generally towards me, from her. Mm -hmm. Am I ever likely to do that again? No. But. If it comes to the day where I don't have anything to vape on, I now know that I can. End of story. End of. Goodbye. Ta-da. Gone. Done. Finished. So there. That was Sav and Kat going at it. Aye. And you've got, but you've got one with you. I have. Which is the same. There. You do it different though, don't you? I do. Because Sav was winding it around the screws, I thought. Was that what? I thought so as well. But you put it down the holes in the end? I put it down the holes. Shall we go to a closey up in? You can. Let's do that. Closey up. Will it focus? And will it help? There you go. This is a hybrid. You've got mesh on here. Yeah, I've got mesh on the middle. So I roll it as I would normally do it. And then I unroll the stainless steel, and then I roll it again, but I roll it round. That's a bit of silica, and then put the coil on. Ah! And does that make much difference to the flavour? Yeah, I think so. Um, and I've got some undyed, unbleached, untreated cotton as well. Uh, and if you do that with the cotton um, and the stainless steel, then the coil doesn't burn the cotton which is one of the issues with cotton. Well, there you go. So that's that's the same thing, only not gold. Going yeah. down the holes in the end like a 13 amp plug. Aye, with those tiny little screws. <laughs> they are yeah. minuscule. Yes, but you know, I, I quite like it. And for, I think it was about 16 quid. Yeah, I think they were about that. Yeah, um, with, it doesn't come with that drip tip, but no. um, yeah, and I use it quite a lot. It's as, um, as rebuildables go, I think they're a brilliant place to start. Oh, yeah. And an absolute bargain. Yeah. It's and you, you, can, you can play it to your heart's content with little mesh wicks if you want, yes. hybrid wicks like that one, yeah. silica wicks, cotton wicks. It, it, as it, actually, as an experimental test bed. For wicks. I quite like that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And you can do it quite nicely with it on your lava tube or. I've got a little mini vice that I got from Fleabay um, with a battery connector and I just put it in there, put it on there and then it holds it quite nicely. Yes. And you've got both hands free and... Yeah. I, I must admit I've been toying with the idea of making something that's got a 510 connector on it mm -hmm. that's kind of fairly hefty and you know that you can put things into work on them. Yeah. Um, Genesis at ease, rebuildable at ease, all that kind of thing. So you, you know, instead of these little, those little crocodile clippy things. I've got some of those. Yeah, yeah. I have, and it's like by the time you've got the screws tightened, you need pliers to tighten the screws to hold things steady. Aye, but they're handy. Those um, I, I did one of the Mad Vapes kits last week. Oh yes, um, you swore. 
<laughs> and I had that in there, uh, and it's very small, mm. it really is small, with big horns like this. Um, and yeah, I, I held the circuit board in place, and I just wrapped a bit of tape around the, the clip so it doesn't damage the board or whatever I'm holding, but they're not strong enough to do something like this. No. So if I'm doing the RTA, for instance, I use a little bit of foam insulation, um, packing stuff around the bottom, and then I just put it in the vise. Yeah, so quite nice I, I, I quite like the idea of something in, in I don't know, walnut or polished mm. mahogany. A nice little, you know, like uh, the kind of stands you used to get cups, trophies yes. on. Yeah, yeah. With a 510 connector on, and then it's solid, and yeah. it's just there on the desk, and you can fiddle and fertile to your heart's content. Yeah. Because I've been doing a lot of fiddling and fertling lately. It's not, fertile, it's not, it's not, oh, it's, well, it's not like me to fiddle and fertile, but I mean, I'm telling you, well, you can see how many mesh wicks are lying here. Mm. So I've been trying all sorts. I've been watching videos left, right and centre and trying all sorts of different makeups of wicks and coils and trying everything out. Still kind of get everything to work properly first time. Ah, oh, but it's good trying, isn't it? Well, it's, it's diverting at three o'clock in the morning when the dog's hooked you out of bed to go <laughs> for the wee that it didn't want. <laughs> <laughs> and you sit down and think, I'm spark awake now, what shall I do? Oh, I'll go and play with coils. Yeah. And at five o'clock you get to bed. Yeah. All good stuff. Yes. It is. It's mm. all good stuff. I'll tell you what, I'm going to take the adverts early. Go on then. And then, and then, and then we're going to talk about Cobra and Booty Cobra. Booty. Because mm. somebody's ripped the Cobra off and not made a very good job of it. We'll tell you more after the adverts. Back in a couple of minutes. The Haze Hour is brought to you by Janty, pioneers in electronic smoking. in Yorkshire for your ACG needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-elixir.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-elixir.co.uk Proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv And now back to the Haze Hour, sponsored by Janty. While the adverts were on, I was just reading chat. It was. And chat, apparently, is talking about this new thing that Scubat Dan has come up with, mm -hmm. which is the glass over the top of the mesh wick in a Genesis style thing. Have you looked at any of the video on that? I haven't yet. I spent most of today, well not most of, most of this morning, hunting about, trying to find glass tubing of the right size. Mm -hmm. Bearing in mind that all of these different Genesis style devices have got different size holes for yes. the, the wick to go through. And I'm, I'm yet to determine whether thin is better or fat is better. And pointless asking my wife, because I know what she'll say. <laughs> did I say that out loud? Aye, he did, didn't he? Mm. <sighs> Brownie points rubbed out. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've been looking at that and and I'm going to try and get some, but they're talking in here about using glass fuses, yeah. which is a thought. Would it hold the temperature though? Well, I've got some thoughts on this, which mm. I'll discuss during the course of the, uh, the disassembly of the boodiness. Mm, yes, the boodiness. The boodiness. Now, let's, let's try and explain a little bit of what's going on here. Um, 
last week, I think it was, my attention was brought um, to a thread on, was it UK Vapors or was it the Vape Pit? UK Vape, well it was on UK Vapors, it's probably on all of them. Yeah, I would fair. imagine it was. Yeah. And apparently one of the retailers in the United States of Americania had been flogging what was supposed to be a Cobra. Mm. The box was very much like the Cobra box. It was well moody though. But it was booty. Mm. Booty mean false. It was, was, a, was a supposedly a copy. Mm. I went to the site to see whether there were any left for sale and apparently word had got across that people were not happy. And I couldn't find one for sale and I thought well if they're there they're going to be other places as well. So Google is your friend mm -hmm. typed booty cobra didn't really um, and I found one in, in, in Romania. You did? I did. So I ordered it and I paid 40 euros for this mm. right and it came and it's here this is it this one right and you can see it's it's definitely inspired by the cobra this is the real cobra here oh he said putting everything out of focus come back into focus you swine there we go this is the real one here um beautifully built i'll stick it there um titanium top stainless steel decks pyrex glass for the tank um, beautifully put together and if you haven't seen inside one then as you can see we're not taut and cheap and nasty here that is very very nicely put together so this copy booty cobra came across this one here and you can see it is inspired by it's got the little indentations and dinty things top and bottom and you kind of think okay the picture that they had on the site was was relatively compelling and then you take the top off and suddenly the differences become apparent now you might not be able to say from the top it's still allen keys but these are recessed they flushed in right and then you think ooh i'll take the, the you know as you do when you get these things you want to take them to bits and see what makes them work and that's when you notice that the little screw affair the nut that goes on the top isn't a nut that goes on the top it's a screw that screws in i thought no more about it i put it all together and i started using it and everything seemed all right for a while indeed one or two folks said how are you getting on with it and i says canny and it was it was very canny um it seemed okay for what it was until I started to get a leak around the base back the closer up you come and you'll see that there's a black o-ring there now there's a reason that there's a black the black o-ring is there is because there was a white one and it didn't seal particularly well mm. so there was juice dropping out of the bottom of the tank and floating down the side of the mod of choice <laughs> for that day and causing me no ends of sticky fingers but a nice high I was buzzing, I was over nicked because this thing was dribbling all over me, uh, all over me, me hands all the time. So I thought, right, I'll take that off and replace the O-ring. And that was when everything came to bits. And if I just, it's difficult to get hold of, but if I take the base off, I'm trying to do this at fingertips. I'm not very good at it, I do apologise. But if I take the base off, it's not what you think it is um, and in fact if I get a screwdriver and push it down the center because I thought it would be a center pole it really well isn't what you have when I pull this out is that which is just a little rod of metal onto which was soldered a bit of wire and I've got the bit of wire here that's the bit of wire that was on. Thick in it. Yeah, that looks like the, that rod looks like what you get in a in a Vivian Avon. It's. I think that's what they've done. Is they've used bits of what they can find. So I thought, what the hell's going on here? Because I was expecting the same kind of centre post as you would get with a proper Cobra, right? Mm -hmm. Given that I was being told it was a Cobra copy, and it isn't. 
So you had that centre post, this skinny little bit of red wire, and just to give you some idea of, uh, of scale, there's a toothpick beside the bit of red wire, right the way down at the bottom of the screen here. Get it further up where people can see it, David. Look at that. So that'll show you how thick that wire is. I've seen hairs thicker. Mm. I've seen cat's whiskers thicker than that. And then I also discovered, and I need to get the plug and felters out for this. There's the top post. And it's the same thing. And the, the soldering was to there. And basically, because the damn thing was leaking, and I wanted to fix the leak, that's it. In the words of the bard, it's buggered. Mm. That's shoddy. That's it 40 really euros is. out the window, big style. Now, I was forced from there to go and search around Alibaba to try and find out where it's come from. And the name on the cap gives it away. Here's the warning. Press the button again, David. I don't know whether you'll be able to say that. It says VAP. That might give everybody a clue as to where it's come from. I'm not going to mention the name of the site because I don't want to give them the publicity. The other thing I should point out as well is the size of that and the drip tip that comes with it. Um, if I take out the standard 510 drip tip on the proper Cobra and put the two side by side, you can see the difference in diameter. The booty one, and this is a proper one, proper 510 size. And if I was to try and put a 510 in there, I mean, it's like we having a pencil in the Blackwall Tunnel. <laughs> um, that actually, I think, would fit uh, um, an Ego type ear. Possibly. An Ego tank. I think that would fit that. Um, what I will say is that the, the booty top will actually fit the proper Cobra. It's the right size. My thinking is that the, uh, the Chinese this time have outthought themselves. Mm. I think they haven't actually got hold of one to copy. They've seen pictures. They've seen pictures mm. and they've thought, oh yeah, and see how that happens. We can put the right number of bolts in. Mm -hmm. We can put the holes in roughly the right places. Um, we can see how the tank will, but I mean, as soon as you see those measurements up the side of the tank, um, you know, once, once you've seen those measurements up the side of the tank, then I think that's the giveaway, that what you're getting is cheap and nasty. And I would caution everybody, if it comes up as a Cobra, especially if it's got that box alongside it, if it looks anything like that damn thing, don't even go anywhere close. Yeah, that's a, that's a Vivinova tank. It is, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's a Vivian over tank that yeah. they've clagged other bits on to try and make it work. Yeah. And they've missed. Now, I think I'm probably going to be able to rescue it by getting some threaded studding hmm. and put some kind of um, some kind of insulation around it and slide it up the centre and, and, and actually make a whole centre part of it. Hmm. Um, but in truth, I kind of wanted to fling it out the window. I bet you did. Um, rip off? Certainly. Absolutely. <laughs> Worth even thinking about? Definitely not. But it brings up this whole notion of the copying of what's going on. Now, mm. stood here is the did clone, and it was marketed as a did clone, mm -hmm. the mini did clone because that was what they copied to do it. They made a better job of that one they did, than they did of this. So I'm, all, I'm assuming it's come from a different factory. Mm. Um, and these have, these have proved to be quite popular. And from, I was reading a thread about the, the, the whole of the thread that was on about copying and there were some quite outspoken comments on that. I mean, have you got any thought on this kind of thing? The problem is, um, and when you look at something, you know, like the Fregatti, all the work that's involved and the people putting the time in to create these things. But unfortunately, in order to protect these things costs so much money that it's just incomprehensible for how much they're gonna get out of it. So it's almost a given that that will be available soon from China and it'll be mass marketed and they'll bung them out at $8. And then someone will buy them in another country and put them out at 40 euros. 
Well, I was pleased to see, because I searched all the UK vendors that I could find, mm. and there wasn't a UK vendor had the Booty Cobra, mm. not one. So kudos and congratulations to the UK vendors. You didn't bite, and I hope you never will. I'm a little bit annoyed, actually, that an American vendor saw fit to buy a, an obvious copy in, because mm. it's obvious that the Cobra does not come from China. It's Siam mods. Siam mods have them made, and I'm here to tell you, having used this one for about three weeks now, it's a, a lovely piece of kit. It's really nice. It yeah. is very, very nice, and it's serving me very, very well, and I like it an awful lot. Um, you know, but the, the, the box, I mean, somebody's typed in into chat, who was it? Lazy Dog says, the picture on the box looked like a prawn with a broken arm. <laughs> and he's not wrong. I mean, it... <laughs> Yeah, kind of a brownie, goldy, cruddy colour, wasn't it? It was yeah. sort of... <laughs> it just didn't, it didn't look the part at all. No. Um, and this didn't come in a box, I have to say, either. Mm. So I'm now beginning to wonder whether there's another booty copy flying about the place. There might be a couple or three or four. Or... So I'm mm. going to go on the hunt for these. Um, here's what I'm thinking, right? And this might be a little bit controversial because I'm, I'm trying to organise my thoughts on it. The Genesis style is, as I understand it, a kind of an open source concept. Right. Um, it's there for anybody to use. And I do well remember, uh, I think it was Rady that came up with it, that said, there you go, this is how it works. If you want to make it, you can. It's open source, creative commons, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's cool as a cucumber. That was kind of the basic design. But when you look at something like the Cobra, that's a far cry from the first of the Genesis atomizers. Mm -hmm. When you look at the Fogatti, that is so far yes. away from the first of the Genesis atomizers. And I mean, that, when you've got it on song, is something else. Mm -hmm. um, I know Mark Jones is thoroughly enjoying his. Dave Kitson's over the moon with his. <laughs> and mine is always within arm's reach, having paid for it. You asked the question earlier on, did I think it was worth the money? I did, yes. Do you know the easy answer to that is, would I buy another one? And I would. You would? Like a shot. Can I have that one then? No. <laughs> Who do you think you are, Keith? <laughs> no, no. Well, you said I was like Keith, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you're not that I, much I like Keith. I might have that instead. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> yes, we might talk about that. Oh. Um, no, I mean, that, that's working really well. But I do think it's, it's a cheek and a nerve and audacity for somebody to nick the name. Mm -hmm. It's even worse when they don't produce the goods. Yeah. Now, I do understand that there is, there's probably some kind of loss in translation when it goes to the Chinese. If you go, if you go to uh, Alibaba.com and type in Cobra mm. or type in Did or type in Genesis and eSig alongside, mm. you'll see listings a mile long of, I think, that they've kind of taken it that the word Cobra is a generic term for that kind of atomizer. Possibly. That did is a generic term for that kind of atomizer. And I'm being charitable here, I think. Mm. But if, if, you know, putting the charitable head on, I think that might be the case. But when they copy the box, that's not misunderstanding. Mm. And that. Yes. To get, you know, it's not exact, but... It's, you know, it's similar enough yes. to be, this is a rip-off. Yes. Um, and I think, you know, really, it's down to those of us that care mm -hmm. about this to kind of not buy. Now, I'll freely admit, I w if, I, if I think it's a rip-off, I'll go and buy one mm -hmm. so that I can have a look at it and tell you that it's a rip-off. But really, seriously, honestly... Although it's a great idea to get into these things in a low-cost kind of way, mm -hmm. if somebody's marketing a copy as the real thing, then that's got to be shouted up. Well, it's fraudulent for a start, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. I think it was Apostle 51. Was it Apostle 51 that saw it? I can't remember. If I'm wrong, I'm, I do apologise. I, I honestly can't remember who brought it up. Um, I'm going to go to chat. Go to chat. I don't normally do this, but I am going to go to chat. Um, where are we at? Oh, there's all sorts of things here. There's a lot of people, a lot of people are using um, the DID clone. And it is extremely popular, but it's patently not a DID. Mm. 
And it's marketed as a did clone. Yes. So it's not purporting to be a did. No. It's coming out as something else along the same lines as. And and I think that's acceptable. I think I think in that case they've kind of taken it's generic. We want to describe what it is. It, apparently, people that buy these things know what a did is, mm -hmm. so that kind of tell kind of tells them because mm -hmm. they don't know what else to call it. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Um, what else have we got? <laughs> Maddie Paulus says the paying customer has the choice expensive original Chinese tat or cheaper copy Chinese tat. <laughs> Slightly racist, well, but yeah, there, there you that, go. I suppose. Um, most US vendors, says Tracy Collins, do not sell the full Siam mods range. Well, I'm here to tell them they should be. Mm. You know, if you're going to do it, do it properly. Um, Maddie Paulus has bought about 50 50 cheap expensive and rarely had any bad experiences. He saved pounds. All Git has the did and the did clone, the VH Genesis, in other words, mm -hmm. which was sold as the VH Genesis from Vapor Hut and not a did clone. Both work great, but the did edges it for me. Saying that, I'd buy another did clone, though. They are a great Jenny for 20 quidish, and he's not wrong there. I mean, I use this one on a daily basis, and it does work well. You tried it earlier. I did, yeah, it's very and, nice. And it's, yeah. it's, it's doing the business. I can't knock it for that. That said, I do know some people have issues because of the makeup of the centre column, mm -hmm. because it's got brass in it. But that's, there you go. Uh, Gary does say that the did clone quality is questionable. He, and you're not wrong, Gary, but it's, it's, it's the difference, I suppose, between a barber jacket and a copy of a barber jacket. Yeah. I'd rather have a barber jacket any day of the week rather than a copy. I'd rather have a dryser bone. <laughs> well, <laughs> which, whichever, whichever <laughs> suits you. But yeah. I'd, I'd much rather have a barber jacket than a copy of a barber jacket because I know the quality of the barber. Mm. Same applies to the Fogarty, same applies to the Cobra. The, the, it's worth getting the originals of those purely and simply because of the quality of them. Yes. Um, it's not, however, worth getting one of these pieces of rubbish. Good God, no. Um, if, if you see it advertised, run. Yeah. Don't walk, run. Do not buy it. Don't shoplift it. Mm -hmm. And if somebody buys you it for Christmas, say thank you very much and put it straight in the bin. It'll save the heartache. Well, if you have bought one, get a... Uh, Refund. Open a PayPal <laughs> dispute straight yeah. away. But if you can't get that, get yourself a metal tank for, uh, to replace it with, because uh, that is definitely a, a Nova tank. It's... Well, I don't, I don't quite know how you'd be able to make it work, in truth. Um, I'll have a fertile with it, and if I can make something out of it, I will. Mm. But I'm... Uh, yes, I'm severely and badly disappointed. Um, but this whole notion of copies can go on. I mean, there are ego copies. The yeah. Reaver was an ego copy. Mm -hmm. And look how popular that's become. I but started. it was a direct and straight rip off of the ego. That's what I started yeah. on the Reaver. Yeah, a lot of people did. Mm -hmm. A lot of people swear by them. Mm -hmm. But they're not being sold as egos. No. They're being sold as Reaver. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole host of other clones and copies around the place. Uh, some of some of the clones and the copies are better than the originals, but I think when it comes down to the likes of these Genesis-style tanks, um, the guys that are making them know what they're doing. You yes. can you cannot you cannot really get there. But I did say I would mention the glass thing. Yes. Now, closely up we come again on this one because I want you to in the centre of this clone copy booty cobra. See that there. That there is a grommet. It's a heat-proof nylon grommet. Yes, yeah? indeed. Yes. Now, the thing about that is, you can slide in your wick through that heat... I'll take this old one out, I can have screw it in. You can slide your wick through a heat-proof plastic grommet, and that insulates it from the deck. It do. And before the show, we were talking about how easy these things are to do. And I was saying that the uh, NGP, I've never had a hotspot on an NGP. Correct, yeah, you said that. And yeah. the reason I've never had a hotspot on an NGP is because the deck is plastic. Mm -hmm. If you've got a slightly dodgy oxidization or something gets a bit warm, there is no way that you can get a short to the body. Mm. It's got to go via the wire out into the other terminal. So you can't get a hotspot. I've never had a hotspot on an NGP. And I'm thinking with this glass mod, the glass modification to the wicks, mm. that even if you just lined the hole in the deck with glass, that would get rid of a lot of the problems. 
So there's a lot of playing to be done here. Yeah. And if I can if I can find a centre post for this horrible nasty booty copy thing. Make one out of that. I'll, I'll try and make it out of something. If I, if I can get that sorted out, then I'm going to get the drills out and get the bits and bobs out, and I'm going to use this as a test bed for all sorts of different, mm. if I can make it work. It's got to earn its 40 euro coin somewhere. I seem to remember, I actually typed into our, into our Skype chat um, when we were talking about this last yes. week. If you didn't like it, I'd buy it off you. <laughs> I don't want it now. I didn't think you would somehow. <laughs> I'm not surprised either. Um, so yeah, I, half, I had thought that I might have gone off on a really bad tempered rant, but I'm not going to do. Um, it's a lesson that's there to be learned by everybody. Um, I, we will now take some advertisements from people you can trust. Mm -hmm. The Haze Hour is brought to you by Janty, pioneers in electronic smoking. And now back to the Haze Hour, sponsored by Janty. Yes, indeed. We're reading chat again. And it's right mm. what Sam Munro says. Yes. Buy right, you buy once. Buy cheap, you keep on buying. Mm -hmm. It's exactly right, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I must admit, I would love to see the day when these the guys, and they are clever, because I would never have thought of this Genesis type of stuff. I mean... It makes no sense to me at all. I still don't know how it works properly. But I, I'm looking forward to the day when they're churning them out by the 50,000 and you can pick them up at 25 quid a piece. Mm. But if you look at the Alibaba website that we were talking about, you'll see on there their production. So you know they'll, they'll tell you they can make 20,000 a week and it costs $8 and you, the minimum you've got to buy is 20 or the minimum you've got to buy is 400 but they tell you how many they can churn out, and it's amazing what they can churn out in a week. Oh, aye. Well, I mean, some, something like that, that clone affair, the booty one, mm. they can, you know, that's machinable, isn't it? Mm. You just need to set the tooling up, and that's it. Well, they're not even have to buy making the, the tanks. They're buying the tanks, aren't they? Apparently so. <laughs> so they're ready-made. It's most, most worrying. There you go. Aye. All Git says, buying cheap doesn't always pay off. Sometimes you get something good. Mostly it's buyer beware. Mm -hmm. The Latin for which is caveat emptor, you know. It is. Polyglot. 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 Mm. That means I'm illiterate in four languages. <laughs> Shocking, isn't it? Mm. Absolutely disgusted, Peyton. Um, shall we go to something that's Chinese that is probably not a copy and not booty and probably is worth looking at? No, I've eaten. I wasn't thinking of that kind of Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, oh, Maddie Paulus is going to continue to ride his look. Good luck, Bonnie lad. Good luck. I hope everything works out for you. 
Yes. As the constipated mathematician said when he was looking at the pencil. Aye. Yes, I'll work it out with me. Never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll put you off there. I Carry shouldn't, on. No, no, it's all right. I shouldn't do <laughs> things like that. Um, did you ever try an Inic and I taste? No. They are a delight. Mm. The magnetic ones, not so much. The screwy on ones, a lot better. The magnetic ones, it's fine. It's a novelty. It's nice and it works. But really, why? Mm. They've come up with something bigger. Is it better? We'll find out. Okay. Because Sav's been looking at it. Aye, she has. She's a good lass, is our Sav. Shall I, yeah? Uh, push the button. I'll push the button. Oh. Sav, your turn. I want to have a quick look at the Inakin Eye Taste MVP that we bought from UK e Store. I don't know if the dot .com or dot .co .uk, but I'll find out. This one's mine. The black one. This one is Cats. Which is like a silvery, bluey type one. But she got this one a couple of weeks after I got mine because I raved about it that much. Dot com. It's dot com. UK E6 store dot com. So what is it? It's a VV device. Goes from this is the old bit. Goes from three point three that's the puff count up to five volts. Now I don't know if any of that came out the right way wrong round the wrong way round. I don't know. But and the other number that you see on there is the puff count uh, how many draws it takes. The puff counter resets when you charge. But I think it only resets once it's been fully charged, I'm not sure. But, yeah, it does. And... I've got my little plinth on. Yes. She's got the plinth on. I've got without the plinth on. Pretty. But they are... Canny. Fantabidosi, I would say. Aren't they? I mean, Kat bought the kit that comes with the Vivinova. Vivinova. Which I think is a lush colour. Unfortunately, it doesn't match the blue of the device, but eh, I can live past that. It's lovely. It's the Novas with the window in as well, so you can see. Which is handy. And it's a proper Nova boxed kit, so. Yeah. They are getting the complete set of everything. So you get the spare heads. The spare heads, etc. This the standard kit without the VV Nova is $49.99 and with the VV Nova is $59 isn't it? It doesn't seem to be advertising that at the moment. And no I don't think it's got any more in stock <coughs> we might have. Um, but the STV kit is $12.99 on its own. So it'll be $59. 99 for the one and I have to say I've been using this for three weeks and it hasn't been out of my hand I love it so do I have to admit the little dripper drip tip we've got on here is actually the one from the Raptor tank yes from v Vapor World that fit lovely onto these, which brings us nicely onto the next bit. Doesn't it just? Jewel coil. Jewel coil. There's a jewel coil. Inakin, two ohm jewel coils. And oh my goodness. Gracious me. They are fabulous. Yours is almost empty. You can actually... I oh, know it's not. You've got a clear liquid. I've got a clear liquid in it. Blind as a bat. There's a... 
a full one. one yeah. uh, you get two of these in the kit, as I showed you. And it doesn't tell you much about what they are on the box. Oh, it's quite good what you do get. Yeah, the rechargeable bits and bobs, but tells you everything about it on there. Yeah. And there is a very comprehensive... Now, I made the mistake of thinking that was instructions. It's disposal. It's disposal guidelines for batteries. Disposal guidelines for batteries. Quick mention of the battery, it's a 2600 milliamp hour battery. And I'm getting on average three days between the charge. About two, two and a half for me. I'm seeing an average of three days. It, I've never let it go flat because if I'm by the computer, I'll stick it on um, USB. But these, the charger, these are jewel coils. The innards are replaceable, and they are fantastic. No leaks. No leaks, no butts. <laughs> they are brilliant. They're not on the market yet though, are they? They're not coming out very yet. soon. And the charger. Let me just show you the charger. It has an iPhone charger there. It has a micro fitting and a mini fitting. And look at the wire on that. That ain't cheap and nasty. It's not very long. No, that's the only complaint I have about this is the charging wire is not very long. And unfortunately, where my desk is, where my computer is, it makes me have to be a little bit of a contortionist. Mm -hmm. But it is one lovely piece of kit that we're both really liking. And I can't wait for these dual coils to come I on the market. I am desperate to get my hands on some more of those dual coils because I'm, I'm onto the second one in the kit. The first one I had last in May, just over two weeks, which I was more than happy with. Mine I'm starting to notice, it's starting to drop off. Um, and that's just after just over a week. But mm. then I'm a much heavier vapour than you. Um, but it hasn't dropped off sufficiently for me to change it. Well, a week for a dual coil. You can't really complain that, can you? Or oh, I don't think that's Well, bad. I suppose it depends on how much they're going to cost. Well, yeah. You know, as to whether I'd be happy or not. <laughs> yeah. But up to now, I taste is to my taste. <laughs> do you like that? I do, like that. Nice love, it? <laughs> it's a double thumbs up from me. And it gets them from me too. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. There we are. That was the double act. Mm. That is cut and sav. Mm. I like the look of those. I do. I think. I mean, I'm not a great box mod lover. Mm. I have to say. I prefer rounded edges, rounded corners. Not, not just with mods, but with everything in life, round rather than square. But that does look like the Mutz Nuts, mm. and apparently it does just about everything for you. Aye. Um, and high praise indeed that Sav's been using that instead of the Darwin. Mm. I mean, that that's high praise, mm. because she loves the Darwin, so she does. And it goes to 5 volts, mind. But then, I don't take my, my tubes much above 5, so... Well, on a lava tube, certainly the uh, first and second iterations thereof, mm. anything above five, if you're using anything below two, it's not going to give you more than an eight, eight and a half watt output anyway. No, because it'll set, it'll set it, itself it down. It drops it back down, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It'll still let you vape, unlike some of the other ones, where it just cuts off and gives you an error. You mean a Prevary? I do. <laughs> Don't be scared of saying it. Um, you know, but it'll just drop, it'll just drop it down. And if you actually take a measurement of what the output is, mm -hmm. um, it, it does drop down. Um, so, but yeah, I like the look of that. It's um, I, I quite like the, the square ones as well. So, well, I could live with it. Mm. Um, I could certainly live with it. Um, just purely in terms of functionality, there are times when, you know, function comes over form. Mm. Uh, I think it's a little bit square, but I'm intrigued by those dual coil clearamizers. Yes. The dual coil visions. Yes. I can't quite see how they've got that done, and I'm interested to take one to bits to find out. Hmm. I maybe shouldn't be. Maybe there's something wrong with that. Oh, hang on. Chat's, chat's doing things here. Oh, okay. Where are we at? Ah, 
I had wondered why it was uh, handy handy stuff and apparently we're finding out Sav has just owned up it was a bad hair day <laughs> so everything was done with hands only <laughs> I'd have that problem because <laughs> hands that do dishes can be soft as your face you know Aye. apparently Aye. and Sav is saying the jewel coils are brilliant she can't rate them high enough mm. so I'll get a Sav type into chat marks out 10 for the jewel coils please Yes. And, and can you rebuild them, Sav? Yes. Can Sav rebuild them? <laughs> well, you know, is, is there a possibility to take it apart and rebuild it? One would certainly hope so. I'm sure we shall find out. Sav's given a 10 out of 10. Excellent. For the dual coils. That's the, the Unic and I taste MVP. Mm. I think uh, that could be on a few people's Santa list, you know. Yeah. For Crimble, which apparently is coming up rather quickly. Oh, yeah. Although I do have an event prior to that that will take precedence ah yes indeed yes i am to become a granddad big granddaddy it's scary it's absolutely scary we have seen the bump already indeed mm. indeed indeed uh, i'm quite quite interested to see the chat has been chatting quite extensively on the notion of copies versus original mm. and there there's a, a great wide breadth of opinion in there there are some that will buy cheap every time. There are some that will buy, as they're phrasing it, quality every mm -hmm. time and buy original. I, I, it's a conversation that's going to go on and on, I think. It always will. And the copies will always be there. Um, I, I'm quite happy to buy a copy if it's sold as a copy. Yes. I, will, I wouldn't want to buy something and purporting to be the real thing and it be a copy because... A is not right, and B, I know what's going to happen. It'll end up like that. Yes. I think inspired by is one thing. A straight rip-off, definitely not. Correct. What are you doing in October next year? Um, I think I'm going to Mexico. No, I'm not. I'm going, I'm going to somewhere in the West Midlands, I think. Yeah, Dave sent me a video. I've got yeah. no idea. And while that was on, oh, the train now standing at platform five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten has come in sideways. And I'd got through the whole show without that happening. Never yeah, mind. Right. Um, I've enjoyed myself tonight. I don't know about you. Uh, it's been cracking. It's been great. And and I want to say a big thank you to Chat um, for doing what they've been doing. They've been chatting really well. And there's all kinds of information in there. It's just a shame we can't keep it with the video on demand. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It really is. We'll try and find a way around that. Um, can I say thank you to Kat for doing the production and reminding me how long we've got to do. And also Sav and Kat for the two videos that they've played in tonight. That's been absolutely brilliant. Been Thanks great. to Marco for joining me tonight. It's been thank great you having you, Bonnie Lad. Good stuff. Um, and we will see you on Sunday night when you tune in to watch Mr. Kitson. Until then, bye bye. The Hayes Hour was sponsored by Janty, pioneers in electronic cigarettes.